Okay, okay. Let's see if we are all set here. Get the stream up and running. And looks like we are now connected. So, all right. Hi, everyone. Um, I am uh, going to be working on an animation tonight. Um, if you've been <clears throat> a regular to my channel, um, you know that besides all the sitar videos I do and guitar uh, gear related videos I do, I also do some animation and that's um, actually something I really don't do enough of and that's sort of sad because it's like one of my real big passions and something I just really love doing. So um, that's what I'm going to be working on tonight. So a few weeks ago or maybe even a couple months ago, I think actually I started this in February, late February, um, I had started working on this shot here in Maya, which is what you see on the screen next to me. And I was doing this animation. And um, what was happening here, and let me just, sorry, one second here. Um, great. So I was working on this animation, and I was, my original goal was I was going to like crank this out. And that just didn't happen. Too busy work and life and doing other projects and doing just other stuff. So after doing like maybe four or five different uh, live streams of me working on this, it sort of sat and I just haven't worked on it. So that'll be what I'm doing here tonight. And I think this is actually going to be great because um, this scene is a really, f it's very fun. I really liked how it was coming along. But I've also not worked on it for a long time. So now I have a really fresh set of eyes and a very fresh perspective. And that is one of the best things um, to have when you're making a movie or if you're making an animation where you have been staring at this thing every single frame, every single frame, every single frame to suddenly be able to go, okay, I've been away from it for a while. I have a fresh perspective I'm going to look at it totally brand new again so that's that's what I'm going to start with to here um, for anyone who's just you know curious the audio from this is from Ghostbusters it's from 2011 uh, film <clears throat> and uh, I made a play blast of this one second before I uh, hit live go on the live stream tonight so this is a um, this is the scene. Now, this is still pretty rough animation. And what is happening here is these two characters are talking and they are um, describing, uh, you know, they're like on a, on a blind date. That's sort of the way I've set this up. They're sort of sitting around a table and he's sort of bragging about how cool he is and she's sort of interrupting because she wants to know why he seems a little crazy. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to play this. Now, audio-wise, you'll be hearing this. I have a microphone to the side here, so you'll be hearing sort of the computer speakers. So probably not the greatest audio experience, but um, and hopefully the live stream won't drop too many frames and you'll be able to uh, see the animation. This is a mixture of what would be um, an early sort of like, you can see here as I scroll through, like some of the, the poses have been blocked out and I've done some in-betweens. And then other poses where they don't move for heart large sections and they're just in, let's say, a key pose. That's sort of like, what is the pose of that scene? So I'm going to go back. I'm going to play this now. And we'll, we'll now look at it with our fresh eyes. Uh, having not looked at this for um, almost a month, I think. And say, okay, where are we going to jump in and where are we going to work tonight? And what will be the things that I go, oh boy, like that was bad. So I'm just going to play it. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to make sure this is set to loop. And um, all right, let's try it. Do the actor thing. Uh, works just, for just real quick. Um, can I ask why no, no glass? Oh, uh, yeah. They just kept getting dirty. So I took them out. I don't have to clean them anymore. Do the actor thing. Uh, oh, works just for just real quick, um, can I ask why no, no glass? Oh, uh, yeah. They just kept getting dirty. So I took them out. Yes. I don't have to clean them anymore. Did the actor thing. Uh, oh, work for 
just real quick, um, can I ask why no no glass? Oh, uh, yeah, they just kept getting dirty, so I took them out. Yes. I don't have to clean them anymore. Did Last time? Uh, oh, worked just for... Just real quick, um, can I ask why no no glass? Oh, uh, yeah, they just kept getting dirty, so I took them out. Yes. I don't have to clean them anymore. Okay, so um, this gray area around, this sort of shows where the this is all cropped out. You wouldn't actually see that in the final render, so that's what that is. First thoughts on this is, some of this I think is actually sort of nice, but this pose I'm not too thrilled with. I think this is a little dramatic. It looks a little funky in the mouth. Um, but I do like the way his nose travels. Like this is a nice arc, nice pause here. This little uh, zip. Um, I think some of these other face poses are, are kind of nice towards the end here. I learned like this with the teeth. She looks really pained. I remember this. We have spent a whole, I did a whole live stream basically just getting this pose for her. Um, and I'm fine with this with him. So I think the question is, should I spend tonight fixing this? I'm going to say this one little jaw thing. Maybe I'll do it for like a minute or so. Just soften the jaw for a bit. But I think mostly I want to focus on going into, let's say, her in this shot. Start working with her. I think that's really where I want to focus tonight. So, um, all right, so I'm going to go right into this. And as always, if you have any questions or comments um, about the process or what I'm doing, um, just feel free to ask. You'll see in my four screens here, I have this is my perspective view where I can just jump right in and, and go about. This is the render camera over here. Down below is some early. Um, Reference footage I took of myself, sort of to look like what was I doing with a hand, or how do I turn my head? I, I look at the eyebrows a lot, um, and was my beard was much shorter then. I really need a haircut too, um, just currently. And then on this side is um, my graph editor, which uh, I don't know how much we'll get into today, but is like so much of everything. You spend so that's where so much of the magic happens. Um, all right. Oh, I know what I got to do. I need to open up my GUI picker. So I am, um, these rigs are uh, from Animation Mentor. Uh, I'm an alumni there. And I think you can actually maybe buy these rigs through um, animationrigs.com. Going to go to Jules. Just load up his GUI picker. And I've talked about this a lot in some of the other videos, um, but the Scooby Picker allows me to immediately just go in and select a certain joint or part of their body and to then just immediately begin manipulating it. It makes just working a lot faster. Um, all right, I'm going to jump into this. I might pull this off into the other window, so um, just know that it's, it's being used, and that's probably you'll see all the different uh, controls here. Let um, me turn the light, NURBS curves on. You'll see, like, if I select his head. Uh, where's my manipulators? See, this is live. Weird. What's going on there? Hmm. See, this is the fun of doing this live because if you work with animation stuff you know that it's constantly just anything in the computer like this anything movie making wise it's like non-stop trying to fix things that are somehow seemingly broken there we go um all right there we go okay i just had to reassign my gooey picker Okay, so, um, all right, jump into this view and pull this bar over. I'm just going to look at this jaw real quick here. And I also have the crease pencil tool. This is, man, if you're not using the grease pencil when you are animating, then you are missing out because that is 
super helpful. And um, people sometimes will do this. They'll, they would just draw on their screens a long time ago. By that, I mean like five years ago um, <laughs> or longer, you know, with like a dry erase marker. It's a really great way, though, to, to track like where a point is, how's the jaw moving through space. Right, so let's look for... I'm going to change my character set to my jewels set. It's sort of funny, like having not worked on this in a while, it's like, oh, where was everything? How was I controlling this part and that part, you know? Let's see. And like what? That's his mouth, okay. Okay, so. One, two, three, four. Okay. There's like a weird little sideways rotation. I this is just so I'm gonna turn off the elder the female character, Aya. I'm gonna turn off his glasses. So I um I don't know, I tend to sometimes over exaggerate this jaw to try to make it more interesting, but I don't know what I was thinking here. This was too much. No, well, I think also I'm not. Okay. I might be okay with it, sort of. actually sort of moving more into that pose more subtly but select this little section and maybe just play blast this out this will take a little minute so if you have a question or anything please now is certainly the time to jump in oh hello that was not that long all right so there's no audio on this it's just to look at the motion. This is a weird hitch now. So that's not working. So I'm going to jump into this graph editor I was mentioning. These live streams are fun, um, but they are difficult because I'm used to using two monitors and having a lot more screen real estate, and you do not get that when I set up for the live stream. Come on. There we go. So... Okay, so now let's play blast this out again. All right, there we go. And uh, if anyone's watching, you notice like my audio is really out of sync or it's dropping a lot of frames. Please let me know. Let's check this out. Oh, that's I think much better. It doesn't look as crazy. Ok, 
Cool. All right, so I'm going to close these up because I don't need them anymore. And there's my GUI picker, so I would just on a space for a moment. And I'm going to go and jump into uh, our next section. Sorry. Look for my search command line. There we go. Should I get a little more space on the screen? All right. So she comes on. It's from like fifty five is the edit here. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start frame fifty six. And let me switch to my camera uh, under my, this is, so I'm looking at my, my character set. So I make a character set just for the camera um, so I can see those controls. And also it's really great because you can see where the edits would be. So 154. Cool. So this will let me focus on her and turn Jules off. So that's the guy. And in my GUI picker, I'm going to load oh, Aya. There she is. And I'm going to set her as my primary character so that I can move her really easily. All right. So. Gonna listen to her audio for a second. Uh, playback on the in my here is probably gonna be really uh, choppy. Just real quick, um, can I ask why no no glap? Just real quick, um, can I ask why no no glap? Just real quick, um, can I ask why no no glass? Just real quick, um, can I? So just real quick, just real quick. So I'm trying to think. In terms of this pose, let me look at my reference here. So this is me earlier. Uh, okay. Just real quick. Um, can I ask why no no glass? Just real quick. Um, can I ask why no, no glass? Just real quick. Um, can I ask why no, no glass? Just real quick. Um, can I ask why no, no glass? Just real quick. Um, can I ask why no? So, all right. This is really great, actually, the, to be doing this sort of fresh. Um, so I was thinking about how I was going to approach this, and it's really nice to go back and look at your reference footage and sort of remember what, your initial thoughts were. Um, so in the reference footage, and I don't know how well this will play, but what I'm doing here is just real quick. So you can see I did this little like hand tap. And then you see the hands are leading And then the body sort of follows. Now, I don't know about this other hand stuff. I might sort of not do this because I think it might look busy. All right. So I think the main thing is to get this just real quick. This, this, uh, just real quick. So hold on.
Let's let's act it out and feel it. Okay, so uh, she goes. Uh, uh, just real quick. Uh, just real quick. Uh, uh, just real quick. So the hands are leading, and the body sort of follows. Um, and okay. I probably look crazy, but that's okay. It's all right to be, look crazy on the internet. It's not like it lives forever. It only lives forever. Okay, so let's jump into her, this uh, view here, so I can navigate around. Nice, nice, okay, so I think I'm not going to focus too much on the this hand thing right now because I don't want to get lost in that. I want to instead focus on just the general mechanics. So, so our quick, where does quick happen, right? So the k, k is on this frame 77. Okay. And just cure out of curiosity. Now this is not as in sync because I'm just acting it out. So I'm looking at my mouth to sort of see the timing relationship. So Okay. So when I'm saying the in the video reference, when I say the quick, I'm not I haven't landed in that pose. I'm quick and it's still sort of flowing into it. Um, all right. So I'm gonna scoot me over in this video because I think I'm leaning over too far. Quick, right? I'm I'm like over here. Then you can't see me. Okay, so uh, let's do some animation. I'm going to put a little gooey, gooey picker over so you can see a good sense. Okay. You can see, like, this is a pretty quick, rough setup. I don't even, didn't even bother making chairs for them. So I'm going to go with her body. I'm going to make sure I got auto keys on. I'm going to set my character set to be the Aya character set. So I already have a frame here. Oh, see, I've already sort of done this a little bit. Just real quick. See, it's so funny having not looked at this shot. So this is sort of probably where I'll end up, and this is where I'm going to be beginning that mo movement. So this is great. So I'm going to select... Uh, I'm also going to pull up a... It's a great um, tool here called the tween key that animation rigs supplies um, and like I said I went to animation mentor and as an alumni I was able to continue to get access to these tools um, so if you're looking to go to animation mentor it's a really it's really great school you'll learn a ton of stuff there <clears throat> all right so I'm going to All right, I'm going to set a key here at 76 for her. So I'm just looking at her hips right now. That's, I want to try to drive the motion from the hips. So. That's real. So I'm going to say that starting around, when she starts saying just. Um, and. She's going into this reel. I want to have had some sort of um, anticipation. Oh, and this is great. I haven't changed her hands to IK either. 
Oh boy, there's a lot to do. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'd done some of this. All right. Um. Oof. All right, I better do her hands now because if otherwise my life's gonna be way more complicated. I'm actually gonna delete these frames I keyed. Because I haven't done anything yet. So why I K Y F K? What is I K? What's F K? Um, I did a video about this as well, but I'll sort of recap. So I K and F K. I K is for inverse kinematics, and F K is for forward kinematics. And the idea being that with I K, the limbs are more the limbs are more pulled as if they're on a string, right? So if I move my body, but I don't move the thing, this, this imaginary string here, the hand, well, if I could do it, the hand would stay in place, right? Um, if it's on FK, there is no string. And so when I move my body, the whole thing moves. This is, um, <clears throat> and if any of this doesn't make sense or I am say something wrong and you are a bigger nerd than me, then jump in, you know. Um, so you'll see like on her hand or her elbow, if I select it now, or let me just do her hips again, sorry. See the arms follow. I'm going to select her hands now, both of them. And I'm going to change the IK, FK on this first frame to be one. Hands are gonna are gonna break basically. They're gonna go way back out. And now, if I select her hips, her hands stay there. This is really useful if you're trying to keep something in an area and have the character move, right? Because like they will stay. Which is great for me right now because I want to have her hands go forward and her come in. If I leave it as FK, I would move her hands forward and then she's going to do this. It's going to be linked together. And so I'll, to keep her hands there when she moves in, I have to re animate them in reverse. And that's just difficult. Um, sending it to IK helps to fix that, but then it can look floaty, so you have to animate in other ways. Uh, yeah, this is not going to be fun, though, to fix this. Um, so I really like these poses that our hands are in. And I used to have an IKFK, like, switcher. But I don't think it it um, I don't know if it works. Yeah. So I would have to repose these hands. Man, this is gonna really be a pain. Okay. So I might just do one hand now. But you can see why I need to do it now because if I do it later, I'll have a million frames to change this on and that's gonna be really time consuming so better fix it now and you could animate it the other way there's a ton of reasons why you would um, I sort of just prefer to animate th this way it's um, sort of more how I would I think let's say it's just more it comes to me a little bit more naturally I guess all right, and now, so then I'll have to flip her el elbow around, so there's an arm twist here. Hello. 
This mouse I have sucks. <laughs> so I find that it's constantly over clicking, let's say. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So that's where we were. And that's where we are, so, okay. So once again, here is FK. That's what the IK looks like. You can see this arm looks a little weird. Shape of that, so let's It's too high. It's a little bit harder sometimes to get a total. Sometimes you just want to like pull that elbow right where you want it. And we can actually blend the two. So there was our FK. Let's check what our IK looks like now. Let's do 0.5. I'll blend the two. It's not that one pose is better than the other. It's just how, you know, I'm trying to get things a little bit similar because I liked what was happening. Right, and if you're watching um, and you have any questions or you just want to chat a little bit, you know, let me know where you're from or not. Let me know what type of music you like or not. You know, feel free to, to chat. Um, all right, let's do this other side now. Let's see if I blend this. Ends up sort of way over here. So I was using the blend to help me sort of get the initial pose. That's why I just jumped again, because I just turned the blend off. Let's see how this is. So before, oh yeah, that was way nice. I like the arm being under just for her weight. Feels more dramatic.
actually like this a little bit more, which is good. For a little cleanup still, but you know. All right. Now, so this is great. What I will do is I will select these two controllers that select whether or not we're in IK or FK mode. And if you go, if I go to my graph editor, you should see IK FK blend and FK IK blend. And you'll see they're both on one and then they go to zero. Set this to one as well. So now when we go to this shot, they're controlled. Now here's the best part. <laughs> um, let me go back a step. When we in this other frame, have our hands moved? Let's see. Let's put this actually back to zero. Let's go out of the IK. Yeah, they lean in. Okay, so I'll, I'll definitely need to re repose this this frame. I thought I'd get away that it didn't move, but now it moves. Okay. Here, here. So same process again. Now what I can do though is I can select this IK controller and using my tween key here I can then tell it to use the previous frame settings. So that puts our hand here. So now I know that I just need to move it out because this is of course we just had this whole conversation about how our arms are going to move. Our hands point a little bit more forward. So I still have the other hand set to FK on this side. So I can use this as a reference about to what I had done before previously. Looks like this arm might need to twist under a bit because we're not touching the table. I may also just need to lower her a bit. Okay, and now I'll do the other hand. So the GUI picker, I'm selecting the controls. To control the IKFK rig. Boom. Then selecting the IK controller on that hand and using the GUI picker, saying match the previous frame the one I had just set. And now I'll pull that hand out, move it down. And hopefully this is all making sense for everyone and if you have any questions or you're watching on the replay and you have a question um, just ask and I'm happy to do my best to answer it. I'm also sort of reposing this a little bit. It was a little too symmetrical for my tastes before. All right, so now we can actually go back to where we were going to start, which is her hips. So all motion I want to think of as coming from the hips, her body, down here. 
So I was gonna go back to frame 63. I'm gonna set that just as a, to maintain sort of this position because she's not really moved between this set of frames or these 10, uh, seven or 10 frames, whatever. Then, So 76, 77 is where the k k um, comes in in her voice. So I want that to be sort of the, her anticipation. You can see that her hips lean in to drive that motion. So I'm gonna have her hips actually having come out a bit. Now you can see the hands, they're staying where they were. I actually forgot that this is not though this is supposed to be the start of our movement. Let me delete this frame. I made an error. It's not the the max of her anticipation actually. That's the start of her movement forward. So we were gonna say just real Okay, so it's probably the end of real. One, two, three, four. Do five the four frames. Make that the height of this anticipate make that the height of this anticipation. And then she can have come in a little bit here. So I'm just looking at the, the rotation of the hips. Now let's talk about these hands. So just real So I'm going to see that these are pulling up. In the render view. Now, so this is the be the beginning of, of her coming forward, but we said the hands were leading. So I could just say like, oh, the hands are like halfway. I'm actually gonna say they're like seven eighths of the way to the where the next frame was. I love using the tween key for this. So let's just do this just very rough now. Let's play blast this just to get a sense. Let's give this a moment to render out. So pop up, all right. Set this to uh, loop. Just real quick. Uh, 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 okay, so this is amazing. This is why it's so great. Play blast early, play blast often. You can see here that her anticipation is 
really big, but it's also really sudden once we leave it. There's no hold there. I need to build in a longer pause here between these two frames. And I could almost argue that this is too much. Like if I go between these two, and I select my body and my hands, I said, what's well, half of that? I'm going to select this body again. I'm going to make it less. So we're in the middle of these two frames. Oh, I also want to make sure her shoulders are acting properly, and they're not. So we grab her shoulders here. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that the, just that little shift in the shoulders makes her weight feel so much more realistic. Like her, she's, the weight of the table is pushing into her. That's the hope of what we're feeling at least. All right, so now I've added a few more in-betweens. I've offset the action of the um, shoulders uh, and the hands um, and body. So, and offset the action of the hands and the, the, the hips as well. And so this is a play blast. I mute this, and uh, let's just take a watch. Oh, let me loop it. Okay, so this pose, she jumps up into this pose there, pop, pop. It's really sudden, so we need to anticipate and cushion into that pose. That's an immediate thought of mine. Can't tell if it's too extreme. I'm still trying to figure that out, how I feel about that. Um, I would rather keep it a little more extreme and, and make it more subtle later, I guess. Okay, so let's save, right? Always want to save. Okay. Let's take a look now in this view. OK. 
Okay, so I'm just looking at these poses from a biomechanics standpoint. So, a couple things. I'm talking about sort of like, is this too extreme? Well, I'm going to work the rest of her spine now on this pose. Her spine drag a bit, maybe. Okay, so how do I anticipate this pose? Well, if I draw from the hips, it's gonna it's gonna come forward a touch. Not a lot though, because it makes a huge movement. And then the movement's probably going to be offset a little bit by her spine. I'm only going to do this top controller for now, I think. That's going to be too much, I can already tell. to make this larger so you could see what I was doing maybe better. Uh, I'm trying to my preferences. One second here. So, display... Uh, no... Hmm. Time slider. Aha. Now that's a little bit more bold down here so you can see the frames. And then height. Oh, that's good, right? That's probably a lot better, so people can probably see more what I'm doing. Oh my god, why didn't I do that like months ago? Alright, so, <laughs> I'm looking at her hands here. This is our anticipation. She comes forward. So I'm seeing this anticipation. So here we are in frame 56 and then 63 or whatever this is. 
I'm trying to give her her nose a little dip down, get her hands a little anticipatory. You can see her spine begins her tor her hips lean in to build the energy to bring her back, but her spine of course offsets that. Sorry, boom. It's really subtle. See how visible it is here. So here we are at the beginning of the shot. Next frame. So there's our anticipation. She pulls up. Her nose also dips down here, um, which you in the side view you can see how it dips in like this to to drag. So those dips to drag. And that's our bigger motion. Let's see how this play blast feels now. All right. Loop it and let's just just real quick. Um, 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 just real. Okay, so I want to increase that anticipation. Right, that's going to be key now because you can hear the dialogue really demands that. Right, so from her neck here, I'm going to bring her head down just so she can jut her head out a little bit more. her torso, or I'm sorry, her, her hips. This is still feeling really strong to me. I'm going to look at her arms. I think the pivots is, is too intense. Hello, what's going on there? Let's try one at a time. So I think that's causing this to be too jumpy. Let's do the other side. And I think they just are too high. I really liked them coming up into her face like that, but it's just too much, I think. So here's a great another sort of grease pencil moment I was talking about before. So I'm going to bring up the grease pencil. So camera tools. And then, uh, where is it? Sorry. Grease pencil tool. Pull this over so you can see it. So I'm going to add the grease pencil. I'm going to draw this top shape here. Just so I can see how this is tracking. So you can see, so I want to change colors here now, because this is like the next big mo movement. And then again, I'll change it to the red. Let's do that. And then again with red, because it's sort of the same path now. And then again. So if you look at this, it's all on top of one another. There's no arc. And, and, the, arc, and the arc is like, like this. 
So yeah, I'm moving my hands towards the camera, but it basically just looks like they're going up and down, especially when something happens fast. So I need this arc to really be looking like it's going dimensional. So that's where I'm gonna look at now the IK poses of these hands. So this anticipations, I'm gonna move forward a little bit. All right, and she comes back. Actually, for this anticipation, I'm actually gonna move her hands this way. So she can anticipate these hands, sorry, I almost was going to point. <laughs> I think what I'm going to, here, let me pick another color. Pick this green. These hands are probably going to make more, oops, hello. These hands, if I can get my tool here, probably going to make an arc that's more like this. I'm over-exaggerating. But that's sort of, I think, what needs to be happening so that that motion is not looking jumpy and really ugly. So let me go through and select those. This is probably the, the biggest takeaway from tonight's live stream for me and hopefully others. So like the hands have come up, but like it's not. So let me clear this out. So I'm deleting all the scribbling I did. Let's see, hopefully we won't crash. You can probably see that the cursor is a spinning beach ball. Cheers. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there we go. Okay. So let's try this again. All right, so now I'm just gonna let me make this. Uh, sorry, you'll see the hands, are of course, now mashing together, and that's just because the both select, both controllers are selected. So you can see this is making a bit of a circle. So now let's get our grease pencil tool. Let's go ahead our first frame of this. We got it on the green. I'm going to go through this again with red. And what I'm going to do is I'll just track the tops of these fingers. And you can see what I, this is, yeah, this is not, this needs to go even further to the left. But let's track where we are now. All right. Go over here. Tops of these fingers down here. So you can see that this arc has started to be made, but then uh, where where is this? This is too messy, right? This is really tight. 
So I'm going to go back, select these hands, Okay, so let's go back to this frame here. I'm going to clear out this grease pencil. I'm going to do a little save. S sorry, I'm getting a, getting a little pop-up on my phone that um, someone's leaving comments on one of my other videos, and it's like, oh, i got to read it right away. <laughs> um, okay. So, also one of the things I'm noticing is I need to have some sort of breakdown between these two frames. This is a really big um, section. And what is she saying here? This is the... This is the which is real, real... So let's definitely look at doing some sort of breakdown between these two poses. I'm going to select the IKs. I'm just going to start by saying give me half of what's in between. And then I will now fix that position because it's obviously not going to be what we want. Two, three, one, two, three, four. I'm also going to move this frame forward one so that it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And that's because this frame is probably going to be closer actually to the following pose. So let's get out our grease pencil. So let's go to frame one of this again. Frame one of the sequence, which is really frame 56. Okay. And I'm going to increase my brush size, which is what? Jeez, I haven't done this P. Oh, God. It's been so long since I had to increase the brush size. I thought it was just bracket, but it's not. It's not plus and it's not minus. All right, I'll save that Google search for when I'm not streaming. Okay, so this is our frame that we want to have in between. Both hands. Do a similar thing also with these position on the hands as well here. This is tough because you don't want it to be like a really apparent circle. Right, it's really, you can see it's really looking strong, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it plays.
Okay. All right, so now I will play the last this section. And, and, and maybe this will look horrible, you know, but it's hopefully using just the basic principles of animation to, to oh yeah, we're playing, to, um, you know, to get us where we need to go, at least as a starting point. So it's, it's pretty pronounced. Which I think, you know, we were expecting. And you can see her, her, if we just look for a second at her shoulders, I think the shoulders are doing some nice stuff. We obviously have to key some of those breakdowns and in-betweens in there. I think that this hand thing will be a lot better actually if her starting pose of the hands is a little bit more towards screen left. Um, and just then make the whole thing a little bit more subtle. So with audio. Just real quick. Um, 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 just real quick. Uh, now also that circle should hopefully be uh, hidden a bit when our hands are doing this type of a, a gesture. So it's not as obvious, but um, here's quick. where um, that's where we were earlier. Uh, you can see from where we were earlier, this type of thing to where we are now. It's obviously been an improvement. Here's real early. You can see when we first started the shot, where we were, where we were at. So. Now I'm going to just try to soften this down a bit. And now let's go in our graph editor. I really need a view that's like just two side by side. And I'm gonna make this graph editor. Actually, let's do, <laughs> do them split. Uh, there we go. Oh, I want them the other way, but hey. Uh-oh, spinning beach ball. Spinning beach ball. Alright, so... Panels, I want this to be the render view, which is what I've called my render camera, and I'm going to make this the, oh my goodness, this mouse, the graph editor. It's clearly not user error. All right, uh, and then I was saying I want to take these two hands 
and translate them, which I believe is going to be X. Cool. I think that's really going to be basically what we need. So let's play blast these hands out, and then we'll see if this sort of um, these arcs that we put on the hands is um, an, an improvement. Uh, from you know what we had obviously earlier, and if just by softening the arc and then um, shifting the hands over um, helps reduce that. So we're gonna mute this, let's loop it, and let's watch. So you can see this gesture. I think I think this is coming in a lot better now. A little pop on her shoulders, but we haven't really addressed those yet. And um, I think for now, this is probably in a good starting spot. And what I would look to do is probably move on. Just real quick. Um, 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 just real quick. Um. All right. Do it again. Just real quick. Um, just real quick. Um, just real quick. Um, just real quick. So there's some mechanics issues with her her head and shoulders, obviously, because we just then took a moment to break away and focus on her hands and the arcs on the hands, so they wouldn't be super distracting. Um, but I am going to call it a night on this live stream. Um, and then pick it up again maybe tomorrow. And um, I'm just gonna try to work on this shot some more. I think uh, my, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next. Uh, might work on this a bit more. Might do a little sitar or guitar practice. Uh, or I have a video I'm editing as well. So anyways, thank you to everyone for watching. Um, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you've made it this far in the video, you are a super viewer. Um, and if you're a super viewer, then maybe you've already visited me on Patreon and chosen to help support this channel. And uh, if so, thank you so much. A huge, huge thank you to everyone who has visited me and uh, at Patreon as well. All right. Have a great night. See everyone later. Bye-bye.